Morning all, sorry for the bit of delay. How you going, Doug? Good, thanks. <laughs> That's good, mate. All right. Just pop you on mute and then we'll get stuck in. All right, so we're going to continue on with a bit of our strength work uh, for today. We're doing a similar program to last week, and we'll go through a bit of ed education topics as we go. Um, Yes, just a few things to touch on is some of the importance of stretching after you've done some strength work. So when you are working out, doing a bit of strength uh, building for your muscles, stretching can just help a little bit with the recovery process and <clears throat> help with loosening up a little bit of the tension that you may, may have following after strength. All right, so. Uh, we'll do a bit of a warm up and I'll go through some stretches at the end. But for today, you'll just be needing your TheraBand, some dumbbells if you have them, and it'll be quite a similar program as we did last Tuesday. Alrighty, so we'll just stand up. You go through one of my favorite movements to warm up, and that's going to be the breath with the squat. So we're going to think about as we breathe in, we're going to make our body nice and tall. As we breathe out, we're just going to squat down. Breathing in, breathing out. In, out. Out. We have four more. Last two. Oh, we're just going to now move into some high knees. So you're going to wake up some of our hips, a little bit of your balance senses of the body. As you're doing your high knees, I want you to do your best to keep your shoulders nice and level and keep your back straight. So try not to let your body flex down. We're going to stay nice and upright, taut through our spine. Then we're going to move to some side steps. So nice and wide. If you find side stepping is okay for you and you can take quite wide steps, you can add in. Doing a little hold on one foot. Oh, I'm doing well. Good work. We're going to move into doing some bum kicks now. So as you're doing these, we're thinking about keeping the knee back. And we're curling that heel up. Trying to fire up through the hamstrings. Good. And we're going to move into a bit of a reverse lunge now. So on the standing leg, we're going to bring our foot back. See if we can bend down a little bit and push back up. I'm going to go the same length for now. Back, down, and up. If you find that's quite difficult, you can just practice bringing your foot back and back in front. Otherwise, if you're feeling stable here, we're moving into what's called a reverse lunge.
I'm going to switch legs now. Job, you need for one more. Good. Moving into some calf raises next. So just going up into our toes, controlling back down. When you calf raise, try to make sure you're keeping some pressure underneath the fat pad of your big toe and not letting your ankles collapse outwards. But think about this warm up as we're prepping all the muscle groups we're going to be working in today's session. One more. Nice job. We're going to bring our legs kind of wide, so as wide as you feel comfortable. We turn our feet out a little bit. Think about bending one knee. Keeping it out so it lines up with the middle of your shoe. Sitting your bum back a little bit. And then pushing back to center. Other side out. Bottom back. Back to center. One more each side. Nice job. Just walk your feet back in. Final one we're going to do is a bit of a hinge. So with the hinge, we're going to think about just softening our knees. Hands on our thighs. We'll slide our hands down our legs, sit our bum back, get some tension through the hamstrings and glutes. Squeeze your bum and come back up. Soften the knees, sit your bottom back. Squeeze your bottom, come back up. Good job, keep that going. Last one. Work. All right. A little bit of work for our shoulders now. So we're going to take our shoulder. I'll just show you from behind. We're thinking about bringing our shoulder up as far as we feel comfortable. Down and pull it across. Back and around. Out and across. If you keep your other hand on your tummy, that will just help you identify if you're uh, maintaining alignment from your rib cage to your hips. Think about turning it back and around. Good job. All right, we're going to bring it by our side. And we're just going to rotate it out and in. So as I'm rotating it, I'm keeping my elbow in line with the side of my body. I'm keeping a little bit of a squeeze below my shoulder blade. And working some muscles known as the rotator cuff. Try to not let your elbow move away from your body. So it's only a tiny gap there. Kind of like you're squeezing your upper arm against your rib cage. Good, and now we're gonna make a fist and just press up and back down. Uh, 
at home, if you've got any shoulder issues, just try to work within pain-free range. Don't push through pain, it's okay. Sometimes if you have a little bit of discomfort, but we don't want to work through any obvious pain. All right, we're going to switch our arms around now. So the first one was bringing that arm up and behind, out and across and slightly up. Back, turn it in, bring it up, down and across. Nice job, let's go for one more. Elbow by your side, rotating it out, back in. So just make sure you're keeping that right angle. Keeping that little pinch between your upper arm and rib cage. Last one, make a fist, we're going to press up. One more. Nice job. Give the body a bit of a shake off. Just let a few rotations through the upper body. We're going to get stuck in. So, how we're going to set it up today again, we'll be doing pairs or triplets of exercises and supersetting them, going for about three sets. I'm going to make it a little bit harder today as well. So the first one we're going to start with is doing a sit to stand. So the sit to stand exercise is like so. Now, for many of you, sit to stand might be kind of easy. So I'm going to show you variations to make it harder. If you're doing both legs, you're going to work for 12 repetitions. And if that's quite comfortable, you can hold a weight to make it harder. What I'd like you to try at home is to do a staggered stance. So a staggered stance means you have one foot out in front and one foot closer to you. In this circumstance, my right foot's in front and my left is closer to me. And I'm going to try not to put too much pressure on my right foot. If anything, I'll just keep some pressure on my heel. And then from here, I'm going to stand up and sit back down. So if you're able to do that, you're going to be putting more weight through this one leg and it's going to tolerate, you'll have to tolerate more of your body weight over time. An example of doing a single leg itself is lifting this leg up, pushing up to stand and controlling back down. So that's Kind of the next level up. Okay, so you might find doing a single leg sit to stand is a bit too much. If the staggered stance is still quite comfortable, then grab a dumbbell because we're only going to be doing six reps. We'll do six reps on one side, six reps on the other, or if you're doing both legs, you're doing 12. All right, so I'm going to start with my left leg closer, my right leg out in front, not taking too much weight, and I want to use, I'm going to use a dumbbell to make it a bit harder for myself. So from here, I'm going to lean forward to push up. Use that leg that's closest to you. 
control back down, I'm trying to primarily use, and this open stands my left leg. Two and down. Do your best to keep your hips level, shoulders level, and you will have to lean a little bit to that side, but hopefully not too much. Nice job. Let's go for one more. My counting is not always the most accurate, unfortunately. I'll we'll switch legs. If you're doing doubles, just stick to the doubles. And we're going for six reps on this side. Try to make sure you're sitting down. Good control. Last one. Good work. We're going to superset that with a seated bicep curl to shoulder press. So arms are going to be by your side. Going to curl up. Push up. Down. Back down. As you do this, try not to let your torso move. Keep your lower tummy drawn in slightly. Keep a little tiny pinch between the shoulder blades or just wanting to draw them down. Depending on your weight, you're aiming anywhere from six to 12 reps. For myself, I'm gonna aim for around 12, or about halfway. As you're pressing up, try not to let those shoulders shrug your ears or hug your ears too much. For the last two. Last one. Good. Final exercise before we have a rest is working our hip flexors. You have one leg out straight, you're going to sit up tall, squeeze your bum a little bit. You're going to aim to raise that leg up and down without losing your form. So as I raise my leg up, I'm keeping my back straight, I'm not slouching or leaning back. Okay, so you're doing your best to not let this torso change. You should feel some of these hip muscles firing up a bit. Let's switch legs. Driving up, tummy on. So you might find that you can't get your knees in line with each other straight off the bat. That's okay. You just build up to that over time. Going for about eight reps each side. One more. Have a good rest. Hold well on. Okay, so this first trio is really focusing on muscles, kind of through the front of our body. Got a bit of legs, a bit of core stabilization, and some shoulders and arms. When we do our following trio, we'll work a bit more through the back of our body. So rest periods are important when you're resting, depending on what type of activity you're doing, but with strength as well, you will build up a little bit of lactic acid when you're, that's the byproduct of your muscles having to work at a sort of higher intensity. So rest periods, good breathing through the nose and control of breathing will help to clear some of that out. And also allow your cells to metabolize more energy. So anytime you're doing strength training, you want to have adequate reps so that you can do the best quality sets and reps and not just push through for the sake of it. Okay, so usually when you're lifting quite heavy, your rest period can be anywhere from two to five minutes. Because that's the time physiologically it takes to recover some of that energy, clear out some of that those byproducts. 
for today, we're working around that middle ground. So we're going to be resting for at least one minute to two minutes in between each trio of exercises. Okay. When you are resting, I like to actually cue breaths. So working anywhere from five to 10 breaths, taking your time, trying to make each breath roughly five seconds in and five seconds out will help to kind of kill two birds with one stone that you'll focus a bit on your breathing and recovery, uh, but you'll also give yourself adequate time to, to recover and rest. All right, let's get set up for another set. So going again, one foot close, one foot in front. We'll be a bit more strict on our reps and sets this time. Going for six. Oh, I'm switching legs. Work. Taking those dumbbells. Sitting tall. Moving into our curl to press. Keep a little pinch between those shoulder blades. Keep some of your lower tummy drawn in. Work within pain free range. Find the pressing's a bit much, just focus on the bicep curls. Four to go. Make sure your torso isn't rocking forwards and backwards as you do this. The last one. Where final movement, one leg straight, one leg bent, sit up tall, do your best to maintain that positioning. We're gonna go eight each side, raise up, hold for a second at the top, control back down. Think about locking your knee out, flexing your feet towards your kneecap. Two more. Switching over. Three to go. And eight. Nice job. Let's have a little break again. I'm just going to grab my water bottle for a quick rest. Grab home practicing, just doing those nice deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. Let's get ready for our last set. 
holding that dumbbell, staggered stance with your feet if you're feeling comfortable with that. If you're feeling really courageous, you can go to the single leg and not use the other foot to help. And away we go to six reps, pushing up, controlling down. Switching legs. Last job. Into our shoulders, sitting tall, curling, up into yellow, back down. Our breathing. Think about breathing in as we come down, breathing out as we press. Two more. Back down, nice job. Final one, leg out straight. Locking out your knee, raising up that leg. Switching over. Oh, eight reps total. Nice job, everyone. Have a quick breather, grab a drink, and then we'll be moving into our next trio very shortly. All right, just gonna move us back a little bit. We got a bit more room to see. So we're gonna move into another trio of exercises, doing a bit of a hinge motion, a bit of a row. We'll see how we're finding these movements. So with the hinge, you've got kind of two options. The hinge is doing the sitting of our bottom back and driving back up. If you don't have access to weights, you can use a paraband around your feet. For my first round, I'll use the band to show you what that looks like. For the second round, we'll use the dumbbells. So when it's around your feet, you want to have your feet hip width apart. Get some tension on the band. From here, we soften our knees a little bit, stick our bum back. And for me, it's a bit loose now. So I'm going to grab a bit lower so that when I draw my shoulders back, there's a bit of tension on the band. And then I'm pushing up for one. Control down, up, 
for two. Down, up for three. Four, we're going to aim for 12 reps. Just make sure you're keeping your shoulders back a little bit. Nice job. From there, we're going to move into a bent over row. So basically, you're going to come into the deadlift position. And from here, we're going to pull our elbows by our side, squeeze our mid back, control back down. You're going to stay in this bent over position the whole time. Just pulling to where you can feel the muscles between and below your shoulder blades. about driving your knees apart a little bit. Last one. Nice job. And then we're going to move into strengthening up our calf muscles a little bit. So the way you can do that, use something for a bit of support if needed. So if you have a chair next to you, one leg up, and then you're going into a single leg graze and controlling back down. So if you can get to the top and control back down without using anything, then doing it without support is fine. Otherwise, just put a fingertip on a chair. Make sure you're getting full range. So you're getting as high as possible before coming back down. We'll go for one more. Switching sides. As you can see, not the easiest movement, especially if you haven't done them in a while. So it's a great exercise for building some stability for your ankle. For myself, you can see I'm wobbling around. So using a little bit of support will probably be beneficial to make sure I'm achieving the full range of the movement first, and then over time, building up to no longer using any, any support. Last one. Good job. Little rest. Take some nice deep breaths as we're resting here. For the second set, I'm gonna do it with dumbbells, just to show you what that would look like. And for the third, if you have access to both, try out the dumbbells as well. And then you can choose which one you like the most out of the TheraBand and the dumbbells. Think about nice deep breaths. When you're doing strength training, you're usually going to be training um, some form of a squat or hinge or lunge, some form of a push and a pull. And that can be a horizontal push or vertical push. And the same thing, horizontal pull, or if we had to do like a lap pull down. So for today, we chose, I chose the vertical press, vertical push, and we're doing a horizontal row. All right, let's get ourselves set up. With our dumbbells, we're going to do two more rounds of this, a little bit of stretching after that, and that'll take us to the end of the session. So feet hip width apart, shoulders back, soften the knees, sit your bottom back, drive those knees apart as you push back up.
We're going for 12 reps. Four to go. Last one. Good job. Coming down, holding strong, going into our rows. Try to keep your neck long. Feel your mid back do the work. Job coming back up. A good variation for the single leg calf raises. If you find single legs a bit hard, you can keep holding your dumbbells and just work on doing some weighted doubles. So, what we might do is do some doubles with the weights. If you don't have weights or you find that's too easy, go back to your singles. Yep, two more. Nice job. Have a little breather. Take some nice deep breaths. We'll go for our last round in a sec. Breathe into your tummy, in through your nose. Sometimes popping your hands on your stomach can give you a nice reference point. All righty. Go for our last round. I'm going to use the dumbbells again for my last round. Soften the knees a little bit. Sit your bottom back. Drive up. Two reps to go. We're straight into our bent over rows now. Last one. And calf raises to finish. 12 reps, driving up, trolling back down. Two left. And last one. Good job. 
Have a little breather. Uh -huh. So that's one method for doing your strength training. It's picking triplets of exercises, three sets of that, and doing two rounds is a nice way to get a whole body workout. We're just going to go through a little bit of a stretch down now, and then we'll finish up. So first, we're just going to work through stretching a little bit through the front of the shoulders. We'll pop our hands behind our back. And then just think about opening up your chest, squeezing your bottom a little bit, giving your chest a bit of a stretch out. Use a rail or chair for support. You're going to pop one leg out in front. Raise your foot up. And just sit your bum back. Think about softly pushing your heel into the ground as you sink down into the stretch. Back up, switching legs. Nice job. Final, I'm going to crack it out. If you can, grab your leg. You're going to pop your leg up. Ideally, grabbing your foot and stretching. Now, if you can't do that, one way you can work on this is to have, you need two things, a chair and something else for support. But you can put your foot on a chair and then just straighten up a little bit. And that may be enough to stretch the quads if they're quite tight. If not, lean down, see if you can grab that foot. And we're just giving it a little bit of a pull. Switching legs. And letting go. Nice job. You might find you get a little bit sore through your mid back. Maybe your lower back, ideally it's not. Feeling muscular soreness is okay. It's a good thing if you feel like your joints are really sore, then that's probably showing maybe technique is a little bit off or you went a little bit heavier with the weights. Okay, but if you haven't really done much deadlifting or rolling like this, that does challenge a lot through the mid back. So if you have a bit of fatigue there, that's okay. Just try your best to get adequate sleep, um, hydration, Eat some good food, some whole foods, with a bit of protein, a bit of good fat, carbs, and a little bit of stretching. If that area is feeling a bit stiff in a couple of hours, just listen to your body a bit there and see if you can take it through a bit of a stretch, holding for about 45 seconds and just slowing down your breathing. All righty. Well, that's us all done for today. Cheers for joining in, Doug. Hope you enjoyed. And see you all next week.